Hey, welcome to a special segment of the Brew Crew Review. Um, of course, your producer Craig, and today we got with us our the Brew Crew Review minor league analyst and uh, amateur baseball draft expert Brandon <laughs> over here to my right. And uh, so, Brandon, uh, we're going to go over uh, the draft this year. Uh, it always falls on the first Tuesday in May. I mean, in June this year, it's going to be Tuesday, June seventh, um, and the Brewers have the fifth overall pick. Uh, and so we're going to talk about some of the choices they may have as far as picking. First of all, uh, you know, the new owner of the Brewers, Mark uh, An Antanasio, also uh, he's going to have some say probably in the pick. Doug Melvin is our general manager. But the real decision gets made by our scouting director, and that's Jack Zarensic, who's done a fabulous job since Taylor left. Or actually, he came in uh, in one of Taylor's, uh, with Taylor, I believe, actually, and uh, he's been doing great and really re yeah. restocking our minor leagues since that year, uh, 2000. So, um, but l let's uh, first review some of the Brewers. And just so you guys are familiar, the amateur, amateur baseball draft, it's uh, about 40 ro rounds long, I believe. And uh, so it really is a way to restock pile in your minor leagues. Some of these guys, unlike other drafts like the NBA draft, the NFL football draft, they don't make immediate uh, impact in the major leagues. So because of that, there's not a whole lot of fanfare surrounding the amateur draft. And uh, so when it, when it comes down to it, most people don't even pay attention. It's not televised. It's actually a process that happens rather quickly via phone conferencing of, of all the GMs. So it's an interesting thing. But, uh, fifth, but it's very important to the future of the franchise, especially their first round pick. Uh, speaking of the Brewers, uh, let's go over their first round selection since 1999. 99, of course, is when we got our franchise pitcher, pitching ace. Unfortunately, it's vertigo right now, but that's <laughs> Ben Sheets, picked uh, with the 10th overall pick in 1999, pick one, pick after Barry Zito. Uh, that was actually uh, the previous regime's last uh, draft pick with Sal Vandal still being the GM. They obviously did a good job on that one, one of the very few. And then in 2000, uh, Jack, Jack Zarenzik took over as scouting director, and his first number one draft pick ever selected was Dave Krenzel, who's now at AAA for the Brewers. So he's going to be making an impact probably in the near future here at the major league level. But, so that was five years ago he was drafted. So you can see how long the player development really takes. Uh, he was drafted out of high school, and right now he's entering the, uh, he's going to be 23, I believe. So he's finally ready now to help the Brewers. In 2001, we selected uh, Mike Jones, who had, you know, had very highly taught a high school pitcher. Fortunately, he has had injury setbacks, and uh, he could be shelled for a long time. He's missing all this season, and that's unfortunate, but he had, we had high hopes for him. Uh, 2002 is when we selected uh, Prince Fielder. Great pick, obviously. It was questioned at the time because we still had Sexton in our system and other uh, first basemen like Brad Nelson, why we'd go ahead and pick Prince Fielder, but it was a great pick, uh, obviously, and he's going to probably be our starting first baseman if he stays on track at the beginning of next year. And in 2003, we had the second overall pick, which is, uh, was great. And uh, obviously, we could pick one of the best players available, and that was uh, Ricky Weeks from uh, Southern University, second baseman. Right now, is tearing up the minor league. So he's going to be up with us, if not uh, probably by the end of the year. Uh, so that's another you know, guy that's going to be a future star for the Brewers. And then last year, of course, 2004, in the first round of the draft, we had also the fifth overall pick, and we were able to pick the, uh, we actually picked the first high school pitcher to be taken, and that right. was Mark Rogers from Maine, uh, high school Maine. And he, we have, you know, just like Mike Jones ahead of him, we have high expectations for him. Hopefully he can stay uh, away from injury. But this year, let's go over who the Brewers' choice might be at number, at number five. Let's start off by first saying the draft uh, picks uh, before the Brewers. First of all, the number one pick is going to be the Arizona Diamondbacks, followed number two by the Kansas City Royals, both had abysmal years last year. Number three overall pick is going to be Seattle Mariners, and the fourth overall pick goes to the Nationals, and that leaves us with the fifth pick. So, again, it's one of these things where in the draft you have to take the best player available, not really draft by a position of need even though that does factor into the other parts of the draft. You really want to pick the best player available, and Zach Drenzik has been very true to that so far in his uh, year. So first of all, Brandon, uh, who are the, some of the top prospects that might be available for the, or first of all, who are going to go on the first couple picks, and 
who do you think might be available for the Brewers to choose from at number five? Okay, well, yeah, I will just go over the top five. Um, the first two are kind of no-brainers. Um, Justin Upton, uh, number one. Younger um, brother of younger uh, brother of B.J. Upton. He's a pretty pretty unanimous number one, five tool player. Out uh, of high school. All around. Uh, he's faster than his younger brother. Uh, apparently hits with a little bit more power than his younger brother, who's also a very good prospect for the Devil Rays. Um, second, Alex Gordon, uh, bigger power hitting third baseman uh, that plays for Nebraska. Uh, he's pretty consensus number two. Um, number three, uh, which is the Mariners pick, um, I'd have to say they'd probably go with Cameron Mabron, although I want the Brewers to take him. Um, it's somewhere he's, you know, he's... He's kind a 5-2 five, outfielder five from, that's where he kind of gets compared to Griffey. I think that's a little lofty expectations, right. but I do think he's a talented kid, and pro in my opinion, I also agree, I think he's the third best player available behind right. Upton and Gordon in the draft, so uh, I really hope that he does fall to the Brewers, but okay, uh, who else are some of the prospects? Um, number four, uh, I think the Nationals are probably going to take Ryan Zimmerman, a uh, third baseman from Virginia. Um, I w if, if the Brewers don't get Mabern, this is probably the guy I'd want us to take, but uh, I don't necessarily think that'll fall to us. Um, unfortunately, I think that if Cameron Mayburn doesn't get picked by the Mariners, he could probably Nationals would be the next candidate who would like to pick him. Yeah. Um, so w with those guys being gone. Also, so all, all the guys you listed, are, none of them were pitchers. So this is a surprising. Right. In pre the past drafts, especially last year, were very top heavy, especially with college pitching. Lots of pitchers, and that's a hot commodity in baseball. But there's no one who really stands out. The best, the top-rated pitcher, and he's out of college, is Luke Hoshaver. And uh, it's very, it's rumored he could be a top-five pick, possibly the Mariners and Nationals, most likely. I don't think the Brewers will be looking at him, no. but you never know. Uh, he is. Uh, what, what, what well, do you the think? problem with Havisher is, is Boris is his agent. Um, that's probably why some of these other top teams, which are lower market teams, besides the Mariners, uh, might look past. Uh, well, the Nationals, uh, they're owned by Major League Baseball, so they're definitely not going to take them. Uh, the Mariners may, may take them, um, but the Royals and Devil Rays, they don't have a lot of money to spend either. So I don't see them going that route with, uh, with Havisher just because he is a Boris, Boris agent. Yeah. Same with the Brewers. Um, I don't see us taking them because we don't want to spend a lot of money on a signing bonus for a draft pick. Um, so it, you think he'll last out of the top five? I so, do, okay. just for the simple fact that Boris is his agent, which yeah. why anyone would want and Boris speaking of that, agent, I you can't know, understand. He's a very synonymous with evilness, but pretty much <laughs> the two guys he represented got picked in the first round last year, Jared Weaver from Long Beach State and also Stephen Drew, picked by the Dimebacks. Both these guys have still not signed. Mm -hmm. uh, they get up to May 30th this year to sign. If they don't sign, they go back in the draft. And these are two talented guys that could also sneak in there in the top five, but probably not because of the fact that right. Boris will still be their agent. And they're looking for big money deals. And I personally don't think that they're both talented guys, but I think they're asking for way more money right. than their talent. Uh, dignifies at this point. So, I mean, uh, or justifies, I mean. So, basically, um, yeah, you're right. Uh, but I, I don't know. I think uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't not be surprised if the Mariners took a shot at, Ho at Hoshaver, if they are interested. But yep. uh, I guess we'll see. But uh, let's try to predict who do, you, who do you think will be picked at each slot until the Brewers pick. Uh, who do you think that each, each team is going to take, starting with the Diamondbacks, number one overall? Well, like I said, Justin Upton's pretty consensus, number one overall. Um, I think that's going to be their pick. Um, and second, Alex Gordon, um, you know, if Justin Upton does happen to fall, Alex Gordon would be number one and Justin Upton will go number two. So either way, I think it's going to be one and two, um, depending on which way they fall. Now, there's some talk, though, if the, if the, the, the Royals really like the high school guy. If, if uh, Upton went number one, and the Royals, of course, if he slipped, would take him in a heartbeat. But let's say that it does happen, then Alex Gordon... Uh, you know, the Royals are deep in their system. They have Billy Butler, who they drafted in the first round last year at, at third base. They also have Mark Tihan, almost ready for the majors. They, they don't necessarily have a need at third base. And also, uh, Gordon is going to have a hefty price tag to him. Do you think the, the Royals, who are also in need of pitching, might uh, maybe not take a shot at hole shaver, but maybe reach for another guy that might go in the top ten pitching-wise uh, and, and then maybe allow Gordon to fall? I've heard some rumors that it could happen. I don't personally believe that they're going to be foolish enough to pass on Gordon myself, so I agree with you. But all right, right. going on. So you've got Upton, Gordon. Who do you got going third? The Mariners. Um, unfortunately, I have the Mariners uh, taking Cameron Mabin. Um, and if they didn't take him, I think they would maybe go with Havisher. Um, yeah. 
But uh, I do think they will take Cameron maybe when I think he's just the third best talent in the draft. So uh, unfortunately for the Brewers, I, I think that, that the Mar that's who the Mariners are going to select. Okay. And then number four, the Nationals, last pick before we go. Number four uh, is, the, is the next guy I'd want the Brewers to take. Um, Ryan Zimmerman, I think, he'll, I think the Nationals are leaning towards him, and there's a strong possibility that, that that's who they'll take, unless, of course, Mayburn falls or any of the top two guys fall where they'd gobble them up. So. Yeah, okay, so then who do you have the Brewers taking number So then five? I have the Brewers taking, uh, I think, the next bet. The Brewers are always hard pick, are a hard team to predict because th they don't lean one way, high school or college players the other, like a lot of teams like to. Like for the A's, for example, Billy Bean loves college players. He yeah. rarely ever takes a high school player in the first or second round. So uh, the Brewers are a hard team to predict that way. But I, uh, but I think uh, Zrenzik's only taken one college player in the first round. Well, right, but he doesn't weeks. have any, yeah, you know, he's taken yeah, I college think he, players well, in the second round. Up and down, he, he doesn't have any right. preference. Right, he just tries to take the best player And that's available. what you should do. Mm -hmm. That's what I think as well. I, I think that, especially in baseball, you shouldn't look for to fill positions of need because uh, they are three or four years away. Who knows what could happen in three or four years, yeah. you know. Yeah. Prince could, you know, who knows? God forbid tear his ACL or something like that, <laughs> yeah. you know, just some oddity, uh, you know, his career could be over. So I think that they, we would take the next best available player, which would be uh, Troy Cholwitzki. Dolwitzki, it's a hard name to pronounce. Cholwitzki, yeah. I think um, so. From Long Beach State, you know, he played with uh, Jared Weaver, of course. Right, so. they say he's not, you know, he's not really fantastic at any one aspect, but, you know, he's, he's good at everything, so he'd be a solid pick as a shortstop, even though we obviously have J.J. Hardy yeah, and Bill and Hall. we hope that he's going to be the, the, well, Bill Hall. Well, but the, 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 <laughs> the future of the Brewers, uh, shortstop is definitely going to be, uh, you know, J.J. Hardy. Right. Where we do have a need right now, obviously, is third base and up mm -hmm. and down the, the system, but that, yeah, we don't have to pick for that. But if someone, you know, that I would actually, so there's a way to, you know, possibly convert uh, to Witzke to uh, third third base if indeed he has a pick or if it ever comes to that. But and since he's coming out of college, he could be ready within a couple of years. But uh, I'd be actually disappointed with that pick. He, so this guy he's he's been compared to Bobby Crosby. It doesn't really excite me. <laughs> no, they they me played either. together. But I mean, uh, I don't know. So I hope that's not the case. Before I list off who I think is gonna, how the draft will play out, the first five picks. I first want to say that I think the top three choices that ideally could fall to the Brewers. In this order of preference, number one, third base stud, obviously consensus number one overall college guy, Alex Gordon. If he right. somehow slips by, and I really know that he's not, unfortunately, yeah, he's not. We, we would jump all over that. Right. He'd fill up our need at shortstop within a couple of years. I mean, I'm sorry, at third base within two years because he's that ready. Yeah, they do say And he's going to be a star. I don't think he'll be as good as like Mark Teixeira when he was a third well, baseman. Well, they compared him to Scott Rowland defensively. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't know. I'd hope he was as good. I, well, actually, I, I think he may he's be a little more known for his hitter. hitter. I, I think that they've been comparing Zimmerman to Roland a lot because of the defensive skills. But yeah, Gordon would be our number one uh, choice, of course. Our number two choice is what I'm really hoping. Of course, if he can make it to us, I think Zrenstick would definitely pick him. That's Cameron Mabern, the, the five-tool outfielder. And, uh, you know, he is a rare talent, and you've got to get that guy if he gets a chance. I'm hoping he, he lasts to us. And then the third guy who would really, I think, we really like is and that's Ryan Zimmerman from Virginia, sure. another third baseman. He's so much, in my opinion, though, he's so much further below of a prospect than Alex Gordon is. I'd right. almost be somewhat disappointed if he was our pick. I'd really like to say that I wish there was a pitcher we'd almost reach for in uh, maybe at the college level, like Ho Hoshaver, but I, I think because of Boris, we'll stay away from him, and there's no one else that really steps up. A couple of guys further down that if we do a reach for that wouldn't be that disappointed is uh, Jeff Clement, a uh, catching prospect who could get moved to a different position from USC. He is a, was a legend in Iowa, right. and he, he owns uh, like the high school home run record for all of high school in history. Uh, he's a guy with a lot of power at the catching position. If he sticks there, he'd be kind of valuable. I, I wouldn't mind if we reached for someone like him. Another guy kind of like uh, a high school or coming a third baseman, Justin Bristow, who's a two-way talent. He's a pitcher and a hitter. Those guys kind of always intrigue me. Uh, I also like Mike Pelfrey from Wichita State. I think he, he could Another be a pretty Boris. solid major leaguer. Another guy represented by Boris. Yeah, though. so we'll probably have to stay away from him, unfortunately. Right. But I don't. I you know honestly, I don't even think Jared Weaver would be that much of a stretch. I highly doubt that he'd hold out a second year. I mean, that's almost. A I good. don't see us taking. In fact, I don't really like Weaver personally. Well, I, 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 know I don't, don't think he's. I think he's a little overrated. I do think he'll be as good, if not a little bit better, than his brother. But that's not saying a whole lot in my eyes. No. I I, I really think that he's going to be somewhat of a basket case, crazy dude. So. 
um, you know, we'll see, I guess. Um, all right, so basically, um, well, well, I'll go through my predictions of how I think it'll play out, and in some ways I almost hope it does play out as far as the draft. Uh, I do see, well, actually, there's even been some talk that the Diamondbacks are pretty locked in to Justin Upton, but if they sign Stephen Drew, who's also a shortstop prospect before the draft, there's some talk that they may just shy away from Upton, even though I think that would be foolish, but they could go for Gordon. So there's a possibility. Yeah, they could. But I, I do think that uh, my prediction is Stephen Drew will go back in the draft, and they will pick Justin Upton. Even if they do actually sign Stephen Drew, I still think they have this inclination they're going to pick Justin Upton. He's just such a consensus number one. Yeah. Uh, I actually, number, consensus number one since he was about 16 years old. Yeah, so. but I, I actually think Alex, if I, if I had number one pick my own team, I'd pick Alex Gordon personally. Well, anyway, so I, I do think despite the talk, the Royals are going to pick Alex Gordon second and they're going to be better for it. So, you know, they, they need him. So, yeah. uh, you know, good luck to, to him. But so I think those are for sure number one and two, whatever order, I, I don't know. But those guys are going to be off the board. So that brings us to the third pick. The Mariners, and from what I've heard, rumor-wise, I think they really like, at first I heard that they're interested in Hoshaber, Shaver, but I think they're a little leery of the Boris thing as well. They do need the pitching. I kind of think maybe they'll pick him, but I actually have a funny feeling that they, I've also heard they're really in love with who you picked the Brewers picking, and that's the shortstop from Long Beach State, Troy uh, mm -hmm. Trowitzki or whatever. And so I, I actually am going to predict that they'll pick him, which is good, because that means Maven will at least fall to number four. So that's, this is what scares Maven and me. Zimmerman. Well, yeah, so that, that leaves us with the two other guys I want. means we're going we're gonna to get one of them, either Maven or Zimmerman. I really like Maven way better than Zimmerman. I, I'm hoping that the Nationals will go an inexpensive route, maybe reach for another pitcher. I heard they like guys like uh, some other guys a little further down. I'm going to, I have a funny feeling Borden, their general manager, is going to pick Maven, but I'm just going to wishful thinking say that they, they've fallen in love with Zimmerman and they're going to pick Zimmerman at third. And so I, with a fourth overall pick to play third base for them. Well, that leaves the Brewers and Zoransic with Cameron <laughs> Maven, who I'm really hoping will be uh, wearing a Brewer uniform, uh, you know, or be selected by the Brewers at least, a uh, number five overall pick come June, uh, June 7th. So, you know, this is something you can't turn, tune in and watch on television, but if you check out the internet, MLB.com has got some cool coverage of that. Also, if you're just looking for some stuff, I should, we should plug uh, BrewerFan.net is a cool website yeah. to go check out on a whole bunch of Brewer-related features, especially draft coverage. They've got some awesome stuff, so kudos to them for that. We've got a lot of our info from there. So uh, you should check that out. So I guess uh, next month we'll have a recap of who the Brewers did select and maybe talk over, because there are 39 or so more rounds right. that they actually <laughs> pick other guys. So it's very important, up and down, a very important uh, day, or actually I think it's over two days, right. where all the picks are made. It's really important time for the Brewers to restock their minor leagues, and it's kind of exciting to me. First day especially. I mean, the second day, yeah. 21 through 40, I think the second day is a lot of those guys will actually go to college. Um, yeah, or possibly. Well, won't be. So a lot but of the guys, guys on the first day won't be Like we be get guys either. like Manny Parra, who are draft right. and follow type guys, like in a 20-something route, yep. and then we sign up for a big bonus the next year before he goes back to college or right. whatever. And uh, so there's always some good finds and stuff like that. So go Manny Parra, by the way. But <laughs> anyway, other, well, unfortunately, we don't have a second round pick this year. And we've had some great second round picks under Zarensic with, uh, uh, you know, J.J. Hardy, Brad Nelson. He Josh was, Murray. No. Yeah, Josh Murray. <laughs> go, Josh. And also, <laughs> well, he picked Lou Palmazan in the third round. So that sure. was pretty cool after he made a mistake of <clears throat> picking Tony Gwynn Jr. or whatever. But, uh, Who's hitting three uh, twenty with seventeen stolen anyway, bases? He's not like his Double father. A, by people. the way, don't be fooled. He's not like his father. He's a he's a di little bit different of a breed. But I think he's very good defensively, and he could be a good player. Anyway, so. what I was going to mention, we don't have a second round pick this year though, because we signed Damian Miller, so we we had to uh, forfeit that over to the. Who the hell did he play for last year? Days. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> 